Welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Cat Spit Productions. Today's video is brought to you by RhinoTech. Forgive the mess in the shop. I have a few screens up in the press and the ink table is a little messy. We're a little bit messy around here because I've been very busy lately working on print jobs. So, if you'd like to see more screen printing videos in the future, make sure to support Cat Spit Productions online by subscribing to our YouTube channel, rating thumbs up, leaving comments, and of course, if you need screen printing equipment or screen printing supplies, please contact me. I can help you out with that. Or visit my website at catspitproductionsllc.com and check out all the screen printing products that I have to offer, whether it be screen printing equipment or screen printing supplies, supplies from RhinoTech and such. You can find that all on my website at catspitproductionsllc.com. Today we're taking another look at the RhinoTech dry stencil system. This is a stencil making system that does not require emulsion, chemicals, water, or exposure units or anything like that. And this is something that I did a couple of videos on probably some time ago, um, maybe over a year. And I just was never able to get to this part of the video where we're gonna, we're gonna print with the screen that we made in that original video so long ago. And probably, you know, one of the reasons why I didn't make this video until now is because of uh, Chrissy D's uh, lead foot on the Cat Spit Productions Learn How to Screen Print Forum has done a really extensive thread on the RhinoTech dry stencil system. So if you'd like to learn more details about it, make sure you watch the original videos on the RhinoTech dry stencil system, okay? And uh, I have playlists for that, right? We'll have a playlist, I'll put that together, check for that, and um, make sure to check out the thread on the Catspit Productions Learn How to Screen Print Forum. Now, let's, um, we're gonna have to take a little bit of a flashback a little flashback so you know what I'm talking about here and you know what I'm screen printing with today. So some time ago we did this video and uh, you'll see that in, if you, in the flashback you're going to see that the shop is very new. I think it was within the first year that I was here in this shop and uh, we were just starting out. So we made this screen, this particular screen right here, which probably you can see this side better. Okay, We made this screen using a laser printer a two-part heat transfer paper and this heat press right here okay so let's take a flashback and take a quick look at how that was done and we we ramped up the power to uh, 350 degrees and we're going to do 30 seconds okay so I have the stencil system dry stencil system I'm going to place it on here I'm not going to use any uh, any Teflon sheet or craft paper or anything. Okay, and remember, you know, it's again, you're going to need to use uh, a really good working laser printer. You're going to need to prep the screen, okay, and you're going to need to be comfortable with putting screens in the heat press. And if you're worried about like uh, mesh distortion or, or things happening to the mesh, you know, does that happen? If, you know, questions about that. The honest answer for me is, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so uh, I don't know technically about all that kind of stuff. I would imagine there could be some distortion or elongation or something going on when you put your uh, mesh in the heat press like that. So you'd have to research that to find out more. Okay, so now this is a, this part of the process is a cold peel. And I think, from what I've learned in the past, I think the best way to do it is kind of like a band-aid. You just whip it off. So I'm just going to peel it off like that. And that's it, okay? So you can see that we have a stencil and it looks pretty decent. Oops, let me try to center it there for you. As you can see, this is pretty cool stuff and it opens a lot of doors for people who don't have a shop environment to work in because you don't need the shop to make these screens, right? And this product is suitable for Plastisol or water-based inks. Today, we're gonna test it with Plastisol inks, all right? So I'm gonna take the screen up, I'm gonna just tape it off 
okay? And set it up on press with some black ink, and we're gonna do a couple test prints, that's it. Let's go, let's get to it. I have a test shirt on here, this is just a rag because we're doing just the test print today, we're not printing anything, okay? So, I don't know, my off contact is what it is, we're just setting this up for a little quickie with black ink, so it's a piece of cake, right? Okay, there we go, wow, interesting. Okay, let's look. Well, that looks mighty fine to me. Who loves you, baby? Yeah, um, I, it worked fine. Worked perfectly. And you know what? I thought we might get a couple of pinholes. I don't see any pinholes. So um, let's take a close up look at this print. The RhinoTech Rhino Screen Dry Stencil System actually works really good. And I was impressed with the sharpness of the edges. This is a 110 mesh with a standard black Plastisol ink. And again, I thought we might get a couple of pinholes just, you know, because of the process. And we did not. I did not get any pinholes, I don't think. So it worked very well. I'm impressed uh, with the final print result. And I can totally see why Chrissy of Leadfoot Shirts on um, the forum, Catspit Learn How to Screen Print Forum, I can see why she loves this system and uses it uh, extensively and invested in it to the extent where she, she bought the appropriate laser printer from RhinoTech to do this and it works perfectly for her. And I can see why it's so cool. It is very cool and it's very instant. You know, it's very quick. So, cool stuff. One of the concerns that I had right away was I noticed that, you know, you can kind of feel the dry stencil when, you're, when the squeegee goes over it. So, my question would be is how is the durability of the stencil over longer print runs when you're really, you know, giving it a workout and pushing it? Because remember, this stencil is actually mostly on the substrate side of the screen. So, we're pushing that way. So, you know, my, my thing would be, yeah, what about, what about durability? But um, I think that this is fine for smaller print runs, you know, and probably even larger ones. I know Chrissy Leadfoot on the Catspit forums has done uh, print runs that are not so small. So uh, I think this could be fine. You'd have to experiment and test and just make sure that, that um, if you were going to, say, print a couple of hundred shirts, that... Uh, that this would be okay for you, and um, I, I don't think it would matter, honestly, because you could just make another screen anyway, really quick. With this testing that I've done here in the Catspit shop, and all of the information that Chrissy Dees has put on the Catspit Productions Learn How to Screen Print Forum under the forum name of Leadfoot, all that information combined with my testing today, I can safely say that this product is very good. It's very suitable for people working at home, who don't have a shop environment, people working in the city, in apartments, in studios where you may not have the ability to have water, chemicals, and emulsion, or a washout booth, and that kind of stuff. This system is very awesome. It's very cool. Good stuff. Okay. I can also say that it's probably going to be fine for runs of 50 to 100 shirts with my testing on Plastisol Inc. I would say, you know, and with what Chrissy has done, I would say you could easily run 50 or 100 pieces you know, no problem. Um, if you're going to run longer runs, you know, uh, I, I don't know. That I don't know about because I haven't done it personally. But I would think that it will last quite a long time. And because of the ease of the process, if you did have a stencil blowout at some point with a longer run, you would just have a, a, a backup screen, basically. You could have a screen, a blank screen, and then you could just press another tra uh, transfer, you know, to make the stencil. And bam, you're done. You can get back on press and, and go again. So it's not that big of a deal. I think the system could be used with longer print runs because of the ease of which you can create the stencil. So very cool stuff. Thanks a lot to RhinoTech for helping Catspit Productions produce all these wonderful RhinoTech videos and supporting our educational program online. If you need RhinoTech products, don't forget to visit the Catspit Productions website at catspitproductionsllc.com. And remember, Catspit Productions is an authorized RhinoTech dealer. So if you need any of their product, feel free to contact me if you can't find it on my website by yourself. All right? Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate your time and attention. It means a lot to me. And we will see you next time.